Michael Cardoza. I would hope that someday the district is able to hire administrators who pull us together and don't tear us apart. Now, uh, my retirement, don't take it too literally. I plan to remain as a agent instructor working on methods of teaching remedial math. These include, uh, uh, let's see, self-paced, uh, mastery, and uh, are completely individualized for each student. Uh, so far, this has gone through three semesters at Chavo, and it supports both Math 65 and Math 55, which are STEM classes. We plan to include in the future here uh, pre-algebra, uh, pre and uh, let's see, student uh, pre-algebra statistics, uh, and uh, well, let's say uh, even engineering 10. I'll just make one last thing as I depart the podium here, who has supported this, has been Chabot, uh, Vice President of Student Services, Matt Krishna, and he hopes to use these techniques uh, in workshops that he is having for Chabot students to get them started on STEM majors. Uh, as always, thank you for your time. I'm used to having at least five minutes, but uh, three we got most of it in. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. All right, the next speaker, if you please come up, step forward. Uh, I don't have the speaker card before me. If you please uh, give your name. Sure. My name is Laura Larcón. I am a faculty member at Chabot College, and I am here today again to express my support for the Tri-Senate Chabot Sanctuary Resolution presented to you on May 16th of this year. At the October 24th Board of Trustees meeting, we all witnessed the passing of an empty resolution that supported Assembly Bill 54, also known as the Values Act. This resolution will take effect the first day on 2018, regardless of Board of Trustees' support. The same day, on October 24th, comments from the Chancellor in support of this empty resolution seem to have implied that Chavos Senate lacked knowledge in the topic of sanctuary. I would like to take this opportunity to offer for your consideration the documents and processes that inform this sanctuary resolution. Apart from the fact that a good number of Chavos faculty are experts on the topic of immigration, gender, and border studies, much of the language in Chabot Faculty Senate Sanctuary Resolution was informed by similar resolutions passed by Santa Rosa Junior College Faculty Senate on December 7, 2016, which is right here, and governing boards of Contra Costa Community College District and Southwestern Community College District that both passed on January 2017, and I have them right here in my hand if you want to check them out. On May 11, 2017, the Chabot Dreamers Club and the State Woke Collective organized a talk and Q&A session with lawyer Melissa Kinney from the National Immigration Law Center. Here are the flyers the advertising that uh, specific workshop. During this meeting, students asked many questions regarding the perceived risk of losing federal and state financial aid, Ichabo uh, became a sanctuary campus. Ms. Kinney explained that there is no, there is no absolutely evidence for that to happen. She added that if there were to, if the government were to attempt to withhold federal funds from students, there will be a wave of lawsuits towards the government. As you can see, Senate did do their due diligence before presenting the sanctuary resolution to all of you. 
As a faculty member at Chabot that works closely with immigrant students, I am concerned about the lack of interest and action regarding this matter. To ignore the Chabot College Sanctuary Resolution for six months and holding as a condition to talk about it only when our sister college, Las Positas, presents a sanctuary resolution seems to disregard the uniqueness of each college and the different needs of the communities where our students live, work, and play. Placing Chabot's sanctuary resolution under the no action subheading on tonight's agenda does not align with the courageous leadership that we have asked you to exhibit since May 16th. To that, I can only wonder if the Chancellor and the Board of Trustees lack the capacity to lead us during these conflicting times. My name is Laura Larcon. I also want to let you know that the collective, we have a, a letter for the Chancellor Janet Jackson and the Chabolas Positas Board of Trustees from a working, profession, working professionals in public health who are also supporting this resolution. This will be sent to you by, via email. Thank you very much. Thank you. Morgan, Hello, my name is Morgan Brzee, and I'm the editor-in-chief of The Naked Magazine. Um, I'm here to try to see if we could get some more funding for the um, magazine by sponsorships, ads, um, and donations. It's a student run by me, by Chris, our advisor, Melissa, um, this is our last year magazine. I have enough, uh, 10 copies of those, and I have sponsorship forms as well. Um, it'll be coming out at the first of the year. Um, in the past, members of the board have sponsored the magazine. It will be a sponsor by just getting a check in the mail. Um, and yeah, uh, I've been in uh, Lost Disease for a while. And I was on the newspaper, and now I'm the magazine editor chief. And it's just a great way for journalists like me that just want to work hard and have something like this to show for our work. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. All right. Our next speaker, Greg Victoria. Once again, I seem that I'm here for members of social justice, and I like to restore something back in the day when we used to have presidents that actually would run our colleges. We should chop at the top, because it's very disgraceful how they do business. I like to see our presidents right here beside me to run our colleges instead of what we have at the district office. I'm a victim of their own corruption, and they know that. I've sued this college four times, but I'm here really for Greg Reese, Jeff Nelson, Andre Dela Cruz, Linda Wilson, and now Kirk Douglas. There seems to be a way if you talk up, you get retaliated against. That's a fact. That's a fact. So what I'm here for is the hiring committees, how they do hiring. You know what, it's really amazing how they already know it's like a charade. They already know who they're gonna hire even though the public gets involved. I've been here way too long and I've seen it. I've been on many hiring committees and I've seen the last wave, wave of people who are being hired, they already know who it is. So I put this to you. There's two individuals that actually in this room at this present time who accused one of my union brothers of carrying a firearm in on this campus. That was a false allegation. It's a felony charge. Okay? So, for 14 months, this person lived in a hostile work environment, and the HR department did nothing. So, when I was talking about hiring, hiring committees, you're actually getting ready to hire, what is it, emergency manager? I'd like to give this, this little note right here to Jen. He's the president. I already know who's gonna be hired before the committee even starts meeting. Now how could I possibly know that if they haven't met? Because they already know who they wanna hire. And that is not fair. It's not a fair play. And you know it isn't a fair play. I try to play fair. 
You do not play fair. Not at all. You have destroyed people's lives that have changed people's lives forever. And I'm going to keep coming back here till I seek social justice for these people. You could help people get there. You have a person that has been for years not being separated from the college, and yet you will not. He is unknown. Why? When he's entitled to his retirement and you won't even give him a separation of papers? What is that all about? Is that personal? Like I said earlier, I was here on the hiring committee to name this college. I've been here a long time. And at this time, in this day and age, right now, it is at the lowest I've seen in a lot of morale. Not unless you're in a clique. I'm not in no clique. I'm here for social justice for everybody. DACA, all these people. We're all immigrants from somewhere. So right here is who it is. Could you pass that to Jim? Would you want me to bring it to you? You can pass it. There it is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Carolyn Arnold. Good evening, Board of Trustees, Chancellor, Presidents, and District Staff, and everyone else. I'm Carolyn Arnold, I'm the Coordinator of Institutional Research, but I'm here tonight as a faculty member speaking in support of the vote of no confidence. First of all, the board, um, the, to the members of the Board of Trustees, I just I want you to know that I have such faith in you to support the colleges, and, your, and you have, that you have such a good intention to support the success of our students. We feel your support and every time you come to our college to, for our events and every time, and I know how proud you are of our colleges and every time you speak out here um, in, when, to, when you're trying to let reason and good, goodwill prevail. So um, this vote of no confidence does not, it, it's not about you at all. We hope that you hear our reasons for it and support us as you have so often. <coughs> Chancellor Jackson and Vice Chancellor Johns, since you're the ones yes. I work most closely with, I don't doubt your intention to do the best thing for our students. And I'm sure you feel that everything you do is for their, that, that end. I've heard you speak that commitment and I believe you. However, this vote of no confidence is a serious step and I want you to know why I support it. I've been here 25 years and I've seen chancellors and district administrations come and go. The best ones have respected the visions, missions, programs, and goals of our two different colleges. And they've worked hard to facilitate